Alpha team report. What's happening, Heather? Alpha team is responding. Bravo. Still nothing. You lost both teams. Get a grip on this operation, Heather. That's bored. Relight the asset. Sir, I need more time. We have no time. Are you going to give that order or not? Sir, please. You are too naive to see the truth. There's no bringing in Bourne. He has to be put down. And you obviously cannot do what has to be done. I am taking operational control. Asset, you have a green light. Repeat, you have a green light on Bourne. Copy, guys. We will defend these police officers. Listen to police officers' commands, listen to what we tell you, and just stop. The nation needs to realize that when we tell you to do something, do it. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, then the courts will figure it out. We don't get to pick the law. We enforce them. But at the end of the day, each and every member is to go home safe. Sometimes the use of force is necessary, you need to comply with the police officer the way the system was meant to be. Comply with the orders of police officers. Resisting arrest is a real and dangerous crime. Nonpartisan liberty for all. I'm your host, Dave Bourne, and it is... August 2nd, to, uh, 2016, I had a little fumble there over the new month. Our first show in August. Uh, so, I'm your host, uh, Dave Bourne, and we are coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada, thank you for tuning in to Nonpartisan Liberty for All. We're on weeknights, Tuesday through Thursday at 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern. And you can listen on Spreaker.com, Nonpartisan Liberty for All.com, and to the archives immediately following the show on Spreaker, YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, and SoundCloud, as well as the next day on Stitcher and iTunes. On Nonpartisan Liberty for All, we promote the ideas of true freedom and liberty and self-ownership, meaning being able to do whatever you want as long as you respect the freedom of others and don't directly interfere with their freedom. Exposing government for what it is, a mafia based on extortion that rules without consent by threat of force and violence. And we are happy to hear from you either via phone at 702-470-7664, that's 702-470-7664, or via Skype at Nonpartisan Liberty for All, which is the username. Just send a contact request with your name and what you want to talk about. And check us out at NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com, which has all the contact information as well as links to all the social media Original articles, I have uh, actually just written a, a few that I posted over the weekend and uh, other things as well, um, archives, things like that. So you can also t- find all of the archives, every show we've ever done at uh, Spreaker.com. Uh, sorry, I'm a little, I seem a little out of it. I woke up about, uh, what, 15 minutes ago, almost exactly. Uh, I fell asleep on the couch before the show started. And believe it or not, I was watching CNN. I tried to watch some of the government media shows to see what bullshit they're putting out there. And all that was really on there, I swear, every story, and I'm not exaggerating, and I did fall asleep, but I saw the preview of what was going to be on Anderson Cooper, and every story was about Donald Trump. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not nothing. Literally, every single story that they previewed, 
you know, again, I fell asleep, so I didn't actually see every single story. But when I woke up, when I was up, and when I saw the previews of the stories, every story was about Donald Trump. Why that is, I, I don't know. It, it ranges from him having. I mean, it's it's ridiculous stories too. the The first story I actually saw uh, was, and you're not going to believe this. So, I think about tonight we're going to be talking all about police, and most of the show or part of the show is based on an article I I wrote. And then we're going to continue with some of the stuff we talked about Friday regarding how to achieve freedom, uh, what pertains to the uh, police. But I think about during that time, they the story they did was Trump eats fast food with a knife and a fork, which is funny because I do that, too. (laughs) And um, not maybe fries, but like. I'll eat a hamburger with a knife and a fork because I'll put a lot of ketchup on it. And if I eat that shit, if I pick that shit up, it will probably leak out somewhere and I'm a slob. And yeah, so I eat most fast food, even chicken. I eat chicken with a knife and a fork. So I'm the same way, actually. Um, It's not a arrogant thing or anything like that. I just, I, I don't remember when I started doing that. I think it started with the uh, hamburger because of the amount of ketchup and or barbecue sauce or whatever I'm putting on it on there. And then it went from there to, you know, everything else. So they're doing a story on Trump while, uh, I don't know how many people today, died or were were murdered by police it, it's usually three to four but who knows if there were any unarmed people or mentally ill people that had a knife or i didn't look at killed by police today or it doesn't even have to be today in the past week that stuff th- that they could be covering that's important or how many people's freedoms got violated. I mean, this is what they're talking about. They're talking about fucking Donald Trump's eating habits. And, you know, the other stuff went from all the way from talking about Paul Ryan and their relationship and them endorsing each other to fucking... um, what else did they preview? I don't even remember. I remember the Paul Ryan story that they can't endorse each other. And the funny thing is, is that no matter what you believe now, I believe the election is rigged and it's been that way for a long time. Maybe going back, you know, almost to the beginning and when and when i say almost to the beginning i you know maybe not the first five presidents or something i don't know um who knows but um cuz i know people will be get really insulted the forefathers they didn't rig the election well washington basically wasn't elected i i, I don't know the as far as I know, I, I don't know the the whole story behind that, how Washington became president. Um, I don't recall him being elected, but I could be totally wrong on that. So uh, I feel that I should know that, but I do not. Uh, I know that after that, they, of course, had elections and they had a lot smaller base. But even if you don't believe that elections are rigged, It doesn't really matter because you know how many people are in the country. You know how many people vote. And to think that your vote counts and you've had two candidates put in front of you by, first of all, you had to be a Republican or a Democrat. 
And the same thing, there are at least 100 million people that participated in that process, like your vote means anything. And the process is really controlled by the political party. So the political parties put these two candidates in front of you. So even if you don't believe that 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 it's rigged, which I don't know how you can't from what I just said. I mean, the political parties putting, you know, um, at least to that point. But if you don't believe that the uh, uh, it's rigged regarding whether Hillary or Donald Trump are going to win. And even you do realize that I don't know the exact number because it all depends on the voter turnout, but you do realize that there's going to be at least 150 million people voting and that your vote really doesn't mean shit. So who really gives a fuck what these people do and say? And it's just a waste of time and attention to get everybody focused every... It's not even every four years because, I mean, the, the election cycle starts almost two years out, really, they start to talk about it. Then maybe a year and a half is when they really start to get into it. And then, of course, now, once the the convention starts, but even before that, I mean, when you have all the debates going on with the nominees and all of this shit, so it takes up so much coverage of at least national news that there's so many other things that you don't hear about that get bumped that are just they consider meaningless which in the big scheme of things are way more important to know about than fucking what Trump uh, uses to eat a piece of fried chicken or uh a hamburger and that he actually eats fast food even though he's you know a billionaire maybe to show the elites eat fast food um that they you know because the whole conspiracy that well the elites don't eat you know that stuff and but i don't think or donald trump's not part of the uh real elites that run everything he's not you know wealthy enough or important enough donald trump reminds me of like he's like a clown the fact that he's even in the fucking uh whole uh election process is just it's kind of funny to me but whoever win, even if he does win, it just means that the like I said before, the powers that be made a deal with him, and it actually would work out better for them because then they could say, "Oh, look, things aren't rigged." Because look, Donald Trump won, and it would give them something else, uh, a quote unquote outsider. And they'd be able to claim that, oh, yeah, the outsiders can win and all of this shit. And then Donald Trump would come in there and do all the same stuff that they want done anyway. And so would Hillary. I mean, it's it basically there's, yeah, is is there a couple things that, you know, are different that, that are the irrelevant shit that they use to show that they're different, yeah, but pretty much they're not. Anyway, uh, I want to save a lot of that. Uh, as I had mentioned on Friday, I, I need to do a show um, regarding that, so I don't want to waste <laughs> waste it all uh, right now on a totally different show. So. On Friday or Thursday, the last show we've done 
uh, we had talked about freedom and how based on you know what's going on what can we do uh to change things and actually maintain the freedoms that we still have which aren't many if any at all and to actually get some true freedom and a lot of it had to do with the police although the police being essentially dogs i like i like to call them dogs more than puppets or uh other stuff because dogs you know they're bitches (laughs) the female dogs but it just it's more insulting i guess Because that's really what they are. And I had the opportunity to, uh, I was talking to somebody today who's, you know, works a lot with police and was telling me uh, just more shit and about how fucked fucked up they are. And it's just really, people have no idea none even with all of and i don't i still don't either even with all the stuff that i believe i know i still you know don't have any idea how fucked up it it really is because it's it's more fucked up than uh they say it is and that gets reported on and all the stuff that don't doesn't get reported on. even though what what's even more fucked up is there is so much that does get reported on now not by government media but you know people like um killed by police and the free thought project they have a youtube channel now um i suggest you check it out i don't because they didn't have one before i don't know when they got one but i had uh found it recently so they they may have had it had one for a while but they didn't at first they just had the website where they were writing articles and things like that because you look at all these videos. I mean, you can go on YouTube and just put in different uh, keywords regarding police. And the things that you just see people posting and with the interactions with police are just crazy. And you see how much... You see the obedient side. You really do. Uh, Regardless what people say. Because the same way people will sit there and say, well, you know, one of the big things is ID. Somebody sitting there. There's a, a lot of videos where, say, somebody's not doing anything or somebody's filming something that now they consider if you're filming certain things, you could be filming them because you're a terrorist and you're going to blow it up. Of course, nothing, you know, besides the World Trade Center, which I don't think they needed to film at first. Um, Nothing's ever been blown up, Um, but they claim there were all these plots, whatever. But they um so they they film these videos and they may do it on purpose and and then you have the, like the ones at checkpoints too um same type of thing so the, it's nothing serious the person will um 
just say that they don't answer questions and they'll ask for an ID, the cop. Now, when the person says that I'm not going to give you an ID unless you're, you you sub- suspect me of a crime, which depending on the state, I found out that in the state of Texas, which is pretty cool, you don't have to ID yourself until you're arrested. In Nevada, you have to ID yourself if um, you have to say who you are, I believe, just if a fucking cop asks you, which is fucked up. And Nevada is one of the more freer states, but it's becoming less uh, free. I, that might be just a Clark County thing, but um, no, I think it's a state thing. I'm not sure because usually things like that are our state. But because of all these fuckheads moving in from California. But when it comes to guns, Nevada is a better state to live in because you can't op- even open carry handguns in Texas. So Texas, which really shocked me when I found that out. And they fingerprint you when you get your license. So there's, you know, it it's weird. It, depending on the state, you're going to find the positives and the negatives. But Nevada in general is a freer. And as I've talked about before, there's levels of freedom. It doesn't mean it's for free. It's just freer than like Massachusetts. But that doesn't mean anything. Uh, no state is free. Um, it's just what level of, of freedom, um, you know, it's like everything, I don't know how you do it on a scale. Cause really like everything freedom wise is like, like a two or th- a three at the highest. And how do you even fit it all in there? Like, I guess you go to negatives or something, but like Massachusetts is like a negative five. I don't know. I'd put it. Having lived there, one of the uh, mass California, although I'd probably put mass lower than California, it, it's with it's hard because you look at like guns. California's a little seems to be at least a little freer with guns than Massachusetts, at least traveling from other states to California with guns. But I don't know; they could have changed their laws and. Um, but yeah, Massachusetts actually, uh, I don't know if I had brought this story up that they had, um, I might have brought it up last week, but I don't think I did, that they had, um, there was an old, it's from an old law, I, I'm, I, I'm still not clear on this, that supposedly it's from an old law, but they didn't enforce it, but Anything that has a magazine that's semi-automatic is illegal in Massachusetts. And the ban on quote-unquote assault weapons goes back to 98, but they didn't really enforce it. But now the attorney general is, and there was something that they, she doesn't, she's not going to allow handguns with magazines. So you'd have to have only revolvers, I guess, and one shot I don't even know how those would work. Um, I know the rifles, like the bolt action, um, but I don't know how you would have bolt action handguns. Um, I, and I don't know how she could just, she, she can't just make up a law neither. So I, I it it's a little confusing exactly what's going on there. But, but they are really bad when it comes to guns. Um, I know you needed, you need like a permit first to buy a gun and then a permit for that gun. So like you need a permit to not even own a gun just to get permission to buy a gun. It was crazy. And that was, you know, 20 years ago. I don't know what the fuck it is now. So anyway, um, you know, of course there's, there's levels of freedom, but in Texas, you don't have to give your ID. And there's two things like in Nevada, you don't have to give your ID uh, on demand, I guess, just your name, but that is fucked up in itself. But anyway, most states, unless you're being 
investigated for a crime or uh, detained for a crime or something like that, you don't have to give your ID. So meaning like a cop can't just walk up to you on the street for no reason and say, give me your ID. And that's what they're, they were doing. And they do it all the time. Now, they, they, I guess, can ask. See, this is the whole thing. And this is how they get around shit and it's fucked up and whatever. Cops can ask and say anything they want to you as long as they ask. And they can talk to you anytime they want. And you can walk away. And see, that's where they intimidate people because people don't know a cop, if a cop's talking to them in the sense of they're just talking to them or they're detained that they they're investigating them so they fuck with you when it comes to shit like that which of course it goes in the list of hundreds of fucked up things that cops do but they will sit there and fuck with you like that but that's why you have to ask, am I being detained or just walk away and, you know, they'll try to stop you. But that might not be safe because they might just jump on you or something. But if they say no, then you can just walk away. You don't have to sit there and talk to them. But they can just walk up to you and talk to you. So and on top of that, they can ask you for anything. So they can ask you for your I.D., and go over and talk to you and say, hey, what are you doing? And the majority of people don't know what their rights are, even though they're getting less and less, of course. But when it comes to the police, and the police don't even know. There's so many videos where the police didn't know, and they went and got their supervisor, and then... The supervisor said, no, they're they're fine. Well, actually, I only saw two videos where that happened. So I don't know if that happens often. But it does happen where they know that they're violating their rights. Because essentially, the police can violate their your rights if they f- fucking feel like it. And, and they don't get in trouble for it and nothing happens. And so there's no incentive and of course we talked about this before there's no incentive for the police to not violate your rights because one they have a monopoly on force so you can't fire their department and two there's no punishment for it there's nothing that happens if a police makes a false arrest there's nothing that happens to them they don't get punished. So any mistakes that they make, um, nothing happens to them. Usually the only time police get charged with crimes is when they're actually engaged in criminal activity. Like, you know, they're out there selling drugs or and raping people and, you know, things we've talked about um, before. I and mean, did a show on it about the 175. But as far as the rights violations and things like that, usually, you know, and of course, acting like an asshole, they'll never get in trouble for that one. But when they were wrong, you know, they didn't get in trouble but the supervisor told them, the sergeant, that no, they're they're okay. And and I have a couple of clips that hopefully I have this uh, this one that's it's short, but it's it's I think it's pretty short anyway. It's it's pretty good where that's exactly what happens. That the sergeant comes over and well, I don't know if I actually got that one. But it was in front of the police station. A guy was filming in front of the police station. So a cop comes up and he's like, why are you filming my police station? And, you know, the the guy's telling him, basically, you have no right 
to ask me for my ID. And the cop says, yeah, I do. I can do whatever I want. I can ask you for your ID and you're required to give it to me and all of this shit. And it goes on for a little while, and he's like, no, I'm not giving you my ID. Uh, what crime have I committed? Am I you know, being detained and all that stuff? And, of course, the officer says, no, you haven't committed a crime, and but you need to ID yourself. You're filming my whatever it, he called it. Like It's like it's his fucking property. So he said, we'll get a you know supervisor, and of course, then the sergeant comes over comes over um because he had heard them, and the guy they're explaining, and he says, "No, he's good, and he's like, even filming and he's like, yeah, he's good. I guess he had a little drone, um but it was flying like you know, I think level or maybe a foot above his head, so I didn't realize at first it was a video using a drone, but it was, they talked about it after with the sergeant that it was a drone. But they had said that, no, he's he's okay. And the same thing happened with a DUI checkpoint as well, where they tried to detain somebody. So, yeah, they can, I mean... Even when they're in the wrong and they don't have the right to do what they're doing, asking you for ID, one, you could still end up getting arrested. There was a girl in Texas who got arrested for not giving her ID. And those fucking douchebags, the young jerk-offs, um, the jerk whatever, the, the main um, guy had said that she should have just gave the ID. So let me explain this again. And I explained this before. You'll see comments and I don't know, they have, the government has people and probably automatic bots or whatever too, but they, they try to shape opinion in social media. Don't think they, they don't, you know, who knows how many people they have that work for them that actually, you know, are probably in a room on all of these we- different websites like YouTube and Facebook and all of these commenting on things in a pro-government, pro-police, pro-anything a- to do with government to make them look good. So, and of course, there are people that side with the government. I'm not saying every single one of them comes from that. There are people that just, you know, love police for whatever reason it makes no sense I, I don't know anybody who loves police i know people that accept them for what they are but i don't really know you know personally like i'm not well i wouldn't be friends with anybody that loved police um well actually that's not true there have been like a couple of people that i worked with that were like love the police um, one of them was married to a, a FBI agent that worked at the Fusion Center that was on the DHS uh, task force or DHS agent, a whole nother agency because, you know, the government needs so many fucking law enforcement agencies. Anyway, um, so and then that totally th- threw me off where I was at. Um, but. These uh, comments, they, a lot of people will say now, whether this is, again, government um, backed or government written comments where they're just trying to influence opinion or real people, which they could be. uh, But I think you're going to get both. But they'll say, well, and this is what this jerk off from the Young Turk said, why don't they just give the ID? And I'll let you in on a little secret, you fucking idiots. The whole point of not complying with something when it's your right, and this goes to all these people who I give credit to, 
who, when they're stopped at a DUI checkpoint, tell them they don't answer questions or a uh, because it's really unconstitutional, even though the Supreme Court ruled it's it is. And, and, and they ruled on it. I, I've said this before, based on the fact that, yes, it violates your rights, but safety is more important. That's why they ruled that. But they also um, the other ones are the uh, immigration checkpoints. And all these people that do all this stuff and they get all this shit for it when, to me, they're heroes, really, because they're trying to help to keep as many rights as possible. So the reason that they stand up for their rights, and this isn't noncompliance like I'm talking about or violating laws or anything like that, or civil disobedience. This is just standing up for their own rights. The reason they do it, whether they plan it or not, because, you know, people will say, well, they went through the checkpoint to do that on purpose, and I was going to do that too. So what? You're just making sure the, the police can test you to make sure you're not drinking, but you can't test them to make sure they're doing their job correctly. And not violating people's rights. You can do that if you fucking want to. So anyway, people will criticize people that, you know, didn't say they do it on purpose. And maybe they do. And there's nothing wrong with that. And criticize people for exercising their rights. And what they're doing, you fucking idiots, is helping to try to protect your rights. Because so many rights have been taken away. They're trying to hold on and do whatever they can to hold on to as many rights as they can. And that's why they do it. You know, I'm sure there's some people also that do it because they think maybe they might get arrested or something like that. But most of most people do it because it's usually the other way. If you give your ID, then, you know, but there could be people that maybe don't bring it up because they have a warrant or something but i'm sure the percentage is very small it's mostly people that are doing it because if everybody did it then the police would stop harassing you when it came to that thing so if every time they ask someone for an id they said no After a while, they're going to stop fucking asking because they're going to be like, well, what's the point? If if everybody who went through a DUI checkpoint refused to answer any questions, then eventually maybe DUI checkpoints would go away. Maybe not. But it would be they they get to the point where they might be like okay well this is getting pointless because every time we do this we don't get any drunk drivers so it's not cost efficient so the point being is that they are defending not only their rights, but your rights and trying to hold on to as many rights as possible. And this idiot on this fucking show, who I don't know what the hell this douchebag stands for and how he can call himself the Young Turks when he's like 45. And I don't know when he started it, but um, he didn't start it, you know, 20 years ago. <laughs> so... Um, YouTube's only been around since 2005 and I know he was on shows, other shows, but you know, in 2005, if he's 45 right now, or he's 35 and uh, that ain't really young. It's not old, but it's, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, at least the, that other girl who fucking pisses me off to uh, Anna Kaspari and who thinks probably she's all that. I mean, she's cute for a girl on the Young Turks, but that's about it. Anyway, she disagreed with him at least. So, um, and I, I think I have part of that clip or I have the follow up to it. So what I'm going to do 
is take a, a quick break to play some of those clips um, since I had to rush to get everything together because I woke up so <laughs> late. I should have set my alarm. I didn't plan on going to sleep. I just I was sitting on my couch. I slept the whole time sitting up on my couch. So that was an enjoyable sleep. Um, so I'm going to play these clips and we'll be right back. Um, just a couple things before I play them. Check us out at nonpartisanlibertyforall.com. If you want to call in, the number is there as well as the username, the number uh, 702-470-7664. Uh, that's seven zero two four seven zero seven six six four and username for Skype if you want to Skype in nonpartisan liberty for all all one word. Also, uh, there's a number of articles on a series I'm doing on the legalization of drugs. Um, I added another article as well as the article I'm essentially uh, talking about tonight and referring to. Uh, I'm not gonna really refer to the article throughout the show but that's what a lot of the show is based on um i had posted on the website as well and you can always donate to the show since it's all self-funded and we don't make any money off the show um just go to nonpartisan liberty for all slash donate i believe there's a button that says donate and you can click on that So if you'd like to donate, I'd appreciate it. If not, no problem. I I understand um, a lot of people are having hard times right now. But if you'd like to donate, that would be fine. I'd appreciate any amount of money. The other thing I wanted to mention is that I've been talking with those who are familiar with the Detroit Threat Management Center, which is... A security company like no other, they're more of a, their protection agency uh, is really what they are. But I mention them all the time because they're where, they're where I want to see things go, where the police are non-existent and we have these private security companies. But not like uh, we, we had a conversation today, and I'll go into it actually when we get back, about... Uh, security guards and how they're totally different. So we'll talk about that when we get back. But um, Dale Brown, who's the founder, creator, uh, started with a dog and a shotgun owner, um, is going to be on either, I asked him for next, not next week, but the week after, So I think uh, we should be good with that. And then we're going to have him on to do his own show periodically. Now, I'm not sure. We talked about starting once a month and then going to once a week for for an hour. Um, I wouldn't mind going to once a week right away. It's all about his time and what he wants to do i'm open to whatever um i think personality wise he could easily carry a show and story uh wise as far as entertain being entertaining not only being entertaining but being informative i mean uh you can you can talk to dale forever it just there's so many stories and he has so much to say that i i don't see that being a problem at all um him being able to uh, do a radio show um you know there's of course some things he'll probably have to get used to just like anybody but i i'm not concerned about you know it being a entertaining show he already has a following of people for what he does that respect him for what he does and are familiar with the Detroit Threat Management Center. And a lot of that is from Cop Block, who went down there and filmed videos. Um, Not from me, but I try to promote them as much as possible as well. Not just to, you know, promote them for him, which I do that also because I had him on the show before and he's a nice guy and, uh, you know, I like him and he's just an overall 
good guy. I have a lot of respect for him for everything he's done. I mean, the shit that he went through uh, to get to where he is now is just, and he didn't have to. Um, he doesn't come from, you know, he doesn't come from the ghetto. He He's from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, I think more, he's not, he didn't grow up rich, but he was like middle class. Um, and he doesn't have, he didn't have to do the shit that he does. But uh, he wanted to help people. And you can tell. I mean, otherwise, you know, he wouldn't have been able to do what he's done and built what he's built. And uh, it, hopefully at some point I can go out to Detroit and uh, check it out. Not really <laughs> uh, the place I want to go on vacation, <laughs> to be honest. But um, and I'm there's no way I'm going there in the winter. But but at some point um, I'll have to go go out there and uh, you know check it out. But anyway, so that's pretty much a done thing. It's just the specifics on um, you know how we're going to structure things, how often, um, how we're going to structure the show, but. You know, I'm sure I'm sure we can come up with all different uh, segments of the show that are going to be very entertaining. I mean, he's got story. I mean, we could even have a story segment where he goes through and talks about, you know, an event that happened. I mean, he can like I said, he has so much shit to talk about. I think it's it's going to be uh, a great show. And um uh, hopefully we'll get to once a week uh pretty soon um and maybe maybe he'll end up deciding to start doing it once a week we'll see uh how that goes but either way um regardless of when uh, that happens and it should happen in September he's going to be on the show in the next couple weeks most likely uh not this week but next week so then that gives me a couple weeks to promote his appearance because I know he does have uh, a lot of people that even follow him on Facebook because they uh, they really admire what he does and have so much respect for uh, what he does. So as do I. So I'll talk about the story about the difference between and and I've mentioned it actually the difference between these fucking security guards and what he does, uh, but. Uh, We'll talk a little about that when we get back. So we will be right back after these clips, uh, important clips. So I'd stay tuned for them and check us out at nonpartisan, the liberty for all dot com. So earlier in the week, we did a story about a cop in Texas who had placed a woman by the name of Lanessa Espinoza in a chokehold after she refused to give him her identity. Um, Now, they were called to the scene because 10 people were involved in a, a fight She happened to be there. She says she was not involved in the fight. She was just in her car, and police wouldn't let her leave. And at that point, the cops asked her for her ID. And since she hadn't been arrested, lawfully arrested, in the state of Texas, she didn't have the obligation to show them the ID. And the cops got really annoyed, and one of them placed her in a chokehold, while the other one told her that she had to delete the video that she had filmed on her phone. Well, it turns out that the cop who put her in a chokehold, Gary Witherspoon, has resigned. He was about to get fired, uh, but her, but his uh, employers gave him the opportunity to resign, and he did so. So it turns out uh, what he did was wrong. Yes, and That's so a the, scary looking dude. Yeah, she took that. I mean, it was a, that, look. A lot of people have given me grief for my position on that. Uh, I was saying I think she should have, whether she had a legal right or not. I think it would have been easier, more efficient if she just given her ID. Um, but th- you see that picture. She's taking a selfie while getting choked. Mm-hmm. Look, it's not the Eric Gardner situation. I, I don't know if she's taking a s- <laughs> Okay. And by the way, she wasn't taking a selfie. This is video footage. No, I understand. Yeah. And, and so, yes, you're right. I'm mischaracterizing yeah. it. But she is holding the camera. She's the one holding the camera. It's not like she's taking a picture. And, and Ben Mankiewicz makes a good point. Uh, picture doesn't tell a thousand words. Pictures lie, right? Mm-hmm. So that picture, she looks like she's smiling. But I'm sure she wasn't smiling. It just happened to have caught her in that one-second frame, right? Um, But I I wanted people to understand 
the main cop that she had the altercation with is not the one who resigned, okay? Right. It's he's, just the he's cop. He's the one that got reprimanded for asking her to delete the video, not for being wrong on the facts of the law that she didn't have to show ID right. if she wasn't arrested. The other guy, like the the he he seems like kind of like a mall cop, honestly. He's an off duty an Texas law enforcement officer, right? Yeah. And he was just the one like cranky in the background. And and again, to be fair to the cops, they say she did admit to being involved in the fight. She says she didn't. Okay. Yeah. Now okay. I'm just giving both sides. Right. Okay. Um, I'm not sticking up for the cops. They've done 18 different things wrong here. But the chokehold is of course unacceptable, no matter how brief it was. Mm -hmm. And they said that the guy also had other employment issues. Yeah. And I mean, from the whole sense of the video, I thought this guy's got employment issues. Yeah. Right. And so he's now gone, and you know, it, it seems like that might have been for the better. Yeah. Look, cops have the responsibility responsibility to de-escalate situations, and in case after case, they are escalating situations unnecessarily. Yeah. Right. So I think that case was, you know, maybe a milder example, but it was still an example of them escalating a situation. Yeah. And by the way, I still stick to, like, the original cop, he was wrong on the law. I, you know, concede that, and you guys, uh, et, et cetera. And, and I'm not talking about the law. I'm talking about it would have been easier if she'd given ID, et cetera. We've got yeah. over that. But I wouldn't have had that guy fired, mm -hmm. right, even though he was wrong on the law. I mean, you want to reprimand him for that? You want to reprimand him for asking to delete the video? I agree with that, okay? But I wouldn't have fired that guy. But this guy got fired because of the chokehold. Yes. Okay. And he, this is obviously a person who's not violent at that at this point. The, the woman that you're arresting. So you don't have to go to extreme measures. Mm -hmm. And if you do, then the cops should look at it internally and go, "This is an overreaction. There should be consequences for." Also, it. look from what I witnessed in that video, I feel like the cops didn't really understand that she was within her legal right to not provide ID there. Maybe it's a they good idea. Clearly didn't know so that, maybe yes. it's a good idea for cops to actually learn what the law is so they can enforce it properly. If you want my name, I'll give you everything. Who are you? I don't need to provide that. Yes, you do. No, I don't. If I'm asking you who you are and why you're videotaping our facility, you have to provide me with some kind of identification. So you have to require identification. to require identification under the law. You need to be able to articulate a crime that I'm about to commit or I have committed. Okay. You're going around, you're videotaping our state police facility for no apparent reason, and if I'm asking you who you are, you have to provide me with identification. I don't have to, it's no. It's just like anything else. No, it's not. Yes, you do. I don't. Yes, you do. In fact, your public information officer already has dealt with this here, and so has a few other officers, so... I don't care who's dealt with it. I'm asking you for identification because I want to know who you are right now. Well, and I want to know what your reason is for videotaping our facility. Well, first of all, Supreme Court has covered that filming out in public is perfectly legal. I don't care what the And Supreme that is not Court a suspicion of crime. So therefore, care. you have no suspicion of crime. Listen, you can cite whatever you want. Right. Why are you videotaping? That's what I'm asking right now. I don't have to answer that. Well, I want to see a form of identification, identifying who you are, why you're outside my facility right now videotaping us. I don't have to provide that either. Why not? Why do you feel that you do not have to perform any form of because identification? Because that's the law. No, it's not. If yes, you're out is. here and I want to know why you're videotaping our facility and you have to provide me some form of identification, you just can't come and walk away anytime you want and just come up with your things and fly them over our lot. I want to know who you are and why you're videotaping this right now. You probably want to get a supervisor or somebody higher up. Sure, here's my sergeant. He's coming out right now. Well, and he'll tell you. Okay, no problem. Hey, Elaine. He was flying the drone out in front videotaping. All I'm doing is asking for a form of identification so we can identify who he is. He's refusing. Not a problem. Not a problem. He can videotape as much as he wants. We don't have to get any form of identification. He can videotape. Not a problem. All right. So you were wrong? Huh? You were wrong? Going my sergeant? Sergeant, yes, I was. So you learned something today. That's good. Okay. Don't worry about it. I'll put you off the I can hear you. Sorry for the inconvenience. Right now with the drones, there's a lot of it. I said sorry for the inconvenience. Right now with the drones, there's a lot of, uh, I guess you could say, I wouldn't say misinformation, but uh, it's an area that we're not used to dealing with. All right? Well, that's apparent. I've dealt with your troopers already yeah, on this. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you have. It's not a problem. That's why I came out here. I saw that he was talking to you, so. The, um, you probably should 
to educate them a little bit more on it. It's so going to be a more... It's kind of an area that's new to everybody, and until they have legislation on it... Which there is none. Right, right. So, so, so try it for your convenience, okay? All righty. Have a good one. much how you doing you to? working what are you up to yeah, who do you work for american news and information services yeah, did you identify myself as a police officer to my gate guard police officer no as a Is news guy sheriff's department sent you out here no, no. so american news and information services sent me out here take it out that is my id Can you take it out that is my id sir i'm on highway 62. you're not on highway 62. I'm not. We're near Highway 62. What highway is you're, oh, Right this now is, you're on federal property. Okay, well, where's the sign that says hey, could it? Could you take it out so I can see it? No, I'm with American News. I haven't committed any crimes. I'm, I'm asking you to identify yourself. Police officer is asking you to identify yourself. If I haven't committed a crime, sir. You have actually videotaping my gate? Is this a federal crime? No, federal it's not. Property. Yeah, it is. No, sir. Hey, could you check take your it out laws. so I can see on it? Can you, you see take it? it out? So I can you see, see it? it? You see it, sir? I see it? Sir, you can't touch me. Let okay. me see your ID then. California ID. Hey, buddy. Hey, I need you to just sit tight for a second. I all of a sudden, I got these cops here who think that me being on this road is against the law. No trespassing signs posted anywhere, so. I haven't broken any laws. They're down there, right? Okay, and it says visitors, Let me see your right? California ID, buddy. You have a nice day. Let me see your California, sir. Sir. Let me see your California ID. I haven't broken ID. any laws. Sir, let me sir. see your California ID. If you want, I'll get San Marino County out here with me, You too. can get them out here. Okay. Bring them out. Hey, I'll call you back in a minute. Let me see your California ID. I don't have to. Control T2. Start to transform to my location. I don't have to. Yeah, that's fine. By law, you can't interfere with me or yeah, my... Yeah, sure I can, sir. sir right you here. can't touch me. Sir, right here. Sir, you're going to find yourself facing a lawsuit. I'm going to face a lawsuit. Okay, sir. See that? That's credentialed media. Mm -hmm. Don't like that? That's too bad. Let me see it. You don't have to. All right. So right now you're being detained until I find out who you are and why you're taking pictures of my bank. Hey, guess what? It's none of your business. Okay. Check your federal laws. Check the Supreme Court. You better call your command. Matter of fact, you better call your base PIO. That, that'd be your smartest move to do. Call your base PIO. Now you've been officially told, call your base PIO and check your laws. That's okay. Now you've been told that you might be violating some laws here. I'm not violating any law. Got a name? B A L A T I C O. Okay. You got a name? Peters. Peters. E T E R S. Did you tell my gate that the sheriff's department sent you out here? Nope. Why'd they tell me that? The sheriff's department didn't send me out here. Who do you here. work for? Are you a freelance freelance press or who do you work for? You get the why we're a bit. Hey, sir, I could care less. I have rights. I have an American citizen. Matter of fact, I spent several years on this base of Delta okay. Company 3rd AVs. I know the law, sir. And the law is I haven't broken any laws. And the fact that this man's put his hands on me now twice, he's breaking the law. Okay? You see this? Okay? This is a street that's open to the public, the American public. I'm allowed to be on it, and if you don't like it, that's too bad. After that, have a nice day. Anybody interfering with my movements is subjected to a federal lawsuit. Well, you get our concern. That's all. I, it is. Your concern has nothing to do with my rights. Okay. Okay. You got that? I hear you saying, sir. I do. And you're a Hawkins, H A W K I N S. You're not even a Marine. You're just you private security.
Your private security. You don't even know the laws. Federal we already know you guys don't know the laws. Federal We've already beat you guys four times this year. Who's we? Oh, now we got more of them. Ooh. Four cars. You can't tell me what crime I committed, sir. You can't detain me. Actually, show yeah. up you know there. The law, four I want cars. A police ask you for identification. What's the law on that? You better tell me what law you're detaining me for. Uh -huh. You better check out the law on that. That's been ruled on by the Supreme Court. Yeah. The fact that I'm telling you this stuff should tell you that I'm pretty sharp on what I'm doing. And you, there, you're a sergeant? He's, he's a you got a lieutenant? I've already put them in their place twice today. Bring them out a third time. Under state law, sir, you can't worry about my safety. 409.5, read it. Hey, sir, I was leaving. I was minding my own business. You guys interfered with me. The fact that he put his hands on me, now you violated my rights. And I'm getting very close to filing a formal complaint. You people keep interfering with me. I got a job to do and I gotta go. So you guys all have a nice day. Who do you work for? Doesn't matter. You see this? I'm an American citizen. So am I. It says, what's it say? Read it. Can you read? Yeah, can I see it? What's it say? It says news media. Thank you. Have a nice day. And that's the law. You are listening to Nonpartisan Liberty for All Radio with your host, Dave Bourne. Call in at 702-470-7664 or Skype in. Username, Nonpartisan Liberty for All. Nonpartisan Liberty for All. NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com. Check us out at NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com. Like us on Facebook at Nonpartisan Liberty for All. Also, and the government police is where I focus more on police stories on Facebook. So I don't post every story to every Facebook page. I actually have four of them. But the main one for the show is nonpartisan liberty for all. And then and, and the government police is the main one for uh, police stories, although I will sometimes post depending on what it is. If it's something big, I'll post it to the show page as well. But uh, on the and the government police Facebook page, I'll post uh, anything that has to do with police, mainly, um, you know, police stories on there. And then I also have the NPLFA media and radio network page, which is for the network, which right now is a very small network, but I'm trying to expand it. We have two shows and uh, I post anything that has to do with the shows or show news and the events for the shows are also posted there um, for nonpartisan liberty for all the events all the events are posted there but I try to remember to post them also to share them with the network Facebook page as well so those were three stories um, I don't know if they told enough about the first one in Texas the one that the young jerks were talking about was a girl who claims that she had nothing to do with it, but then they try to say she did, but I, I don't know. That's irrelevant. Essentially, there was some fight at fa a fast food place or something like that, and they were just questioning, questioning her as a witness, 
and she didn't want to give her ID and she didn't have to because in the state of Texas, you don't even have to give your ID unless you're arrested. But she wouldn't have to in another state, in other states neither, because she wasn't being detained for a crime. So they had not only arrested her for not giving an ID, they arrested her on what I've got arrested for twice. Um, once it never even I never even got arraigned. It got dropped even before arraignment, but was the obstruction of an officer because they can claim you're obstructing their investigation and they'd love to do that. It's it's basically one of their we're going to arrest you because we feel like it uh, charges like disorderly conduct or, you know, those type of bullshit fucking open ended it's so open ended it's just saying you interfered with their investigation somehow however i don't know what it says in other states but in the state of nevada it actually says you have to have intent and i went to trial on one of them i've talked all about it and i had no intent not only that i ended up with bruises all over me but that just goes to show how the the laws it's all set up for the government to rule over you and control you and that's what governments do that's the purpose of a government in my opinion Although, if you look up the definition, I've mentioned this numerous times, you look up the definition of government, you will always see control in the definition somewhere. But anyway, the two main things that I want to talk about tonight and that I talk about regarding the police is, one, that all police are are criminals. And that's the article I wrote, that all police are criminals. And... For the people who haven't heard this before, I will go through in summary how I come to this conclusion. In the in the um, article, I of course go through it in detail of why I believe it, and and you can disagree, and that's fine, but it does actually make a lot of sense, and. It's a logical argument. Now, again, anybody can make a logical argument and and disagree with it. It doesn't mean I'm right. It's not a matter of right or wrong. It's a matter of opinion that I believe all police are criminals. And here is why. Now, my biggest problem with this uh, or with people's opinions of this is that they come to their conclusion about police based on either nothing or logic that is not really logic that you that is a valid argument. So what I mean by that is it doesn't address the issue of police being good or bad. Because when I talk about all police being criminals, it has to do with their job solely that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about their personal lives. And I'm not talking about their interactions when they're off duty. Although there's a lot of cops off duty that do things they shouldn't be doing. But I don't address that. Because I really don't even need to. I I think I've addressed enough um, and given enough information to come to a logical conclusion. 
And even uh, I remember there was a guy who had listened to my show a lot. Um, and good guy. I'm friends with him on Facebook. Um, and I guess he ended up getting a job in radio. So uh, congrats to him as a traffic reporter, at least last time I uh, messaged him on Facebook. You know, I don't know him that well. I just casually um, know him. He called in the show before, and he wanted me on uh, his show at first because I, I didn't, you know, as I got to, to know him a little better, not that I know him that well anyway, you know, at first I thought it was kind of weird that, you know, he wanted me to be on his show and the way he kind of approached my show, like he was studying me for something. He was kind of just looking at different points of view, of political points of view and whatnot and, and, and whatever. But um, I remember when he had called in about this and the first time I went through it, and he had said, well, I can't see a flaw in your argument as far as it being a logical argument. Now, I don't know that he agreed with me, but his point was that – and a- another thing, he w- – I totally forgot about this. He started getting into things like cop block because of me. He's one of the few people that I can say I influenced in a positive way – in that he started taking notice of what the police were doing. And this was before um, the government media started covering any of the police shootings. Um, he, He went to the cop block site and he ended up, you know, reading articles about uh, what the police were doing or watch videos or whatever. So um, that was, I haven't heard that that much from people that things that I've done on the show have influenced them or got compliments. Recently, I got a Twitter message from somebody who had said, you know, thanks for talking about self-ownership. It's important or something along those lines. So I, of course, tweeted them back and thanked them because things like that are the reason I do the show. Now, I don't know that that was a, you know, uh, I influenced him in any way. I think he knows all about self-ownership, but the fact that I'm talking about it on a internet radio show, even though it's small, but I'm trying to get that out to people that he was grateful that, hey, that's, that's good that you're trying to do that. So thanks for trying to expose the concept of self-ownership to other people because I think that's where it really starts. When it comes to freedom and all the concepts of freedom, to me that's where it it really starts is is probably with self-ownership. And I'm not somebody who has read all of these libertarian philosophers neither that's one of the differences i think between me and a lot of other independent uh internet radio shows uh, that are freedom oriented is that a lot of them will talk about these libertarian philosophers and in To be honest, I I probably should read them. But I came up with a lot of these ideas on my own, uh, along with, you know, I would say that listening to Free Talk Live, there was some stuff that I didn't think of before. So I would say there's some influence there. Um, But... A lot of the stuff, and and I'm not saying it to compliment myself. It's just a lot of these things, they were things that I just believed. Uh, I just didn't explain them in the same way uh, Murray Rothbard or uh, I I can't think of any other uh, uh, libertarian philosophers right now. But I would talk to people who would refer to a lot of these libertarian philosophers and and i'm not 
I, I know the names, but I've never read any of their uh, books. Um, which again, I probably should because it would probably help me. Uh, if anything, it's not going to hurt. Um, but most of the things that I believe are things that I believe because I believe them. I, I don't know any other way to explain it. Not to say that somebody read a book and they didn't believe it before and then they did, but I wasn't influenced by in in that way. I just kind of came to my own conclusions based on my life and how I grew up and how things uh, had happened in my life. And, and I would say... Out of all of the, you know, there's not a lot of positive things, I guess I'd say, about my father um, who died about five years ago. But I would, when I look back now, I would probably say that he was a libertarian, not a, you know, hardcore, um, no government type libertarian. But, you know, he thought all drugs should be legal uh, there are some other things, things like that. He he didn't like the police too much. He, I think, had issues with authority, um, which I definitely did. And, and I think that's where some of my ideas started, where I not having issues with authority because I wanted to have issues with authority, but questioning authority. And it started with him, and that's why I had so many problems with him, because it was, you know, do this. And it was, well, why? Why do I have to do this? And, and you know, parents, oh, well, because I said so. And, of course, I talked about on Thursday, I believe, one of the second, well, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't rank these first and second. I put them both together. But one of the other most important things is the way you bring up your kids, I believe. If if we want to get to freedom, that's one of the most important things. And the way things are going, that is not going in a positive route. But back to um, police... The way I came up with, um, I was talking about the the guy that I, I knew. He had said, you know, about the argument that it's, you know, a logical argument. I can't, I, I think his words were, well, I can't come up with any, you know, fault in that argument. And the problem I have with people that disagree with me or say all police are good or most police are good is they don't base it off of anything. And I was saying before that, that I'm only looking at police on the job. I'm not looking at their personal lives. So I've noticed that the majority of people who defend police or say most police are good or only some police are bad, it's the bad apples, are people that are either related to or friends with police. Or you have those, you know, psycho, hardcore nationalists that the government can do no wrong type people that are love the military, love the police. Um, and I'm not going to talk about the military, but that I would put, look at more as a problem or a negative than a positive. And when I look at, again, getting to a point of freedom, I haven't even got to the military because, if you have the military that you have now, 
they could bring them right in um, if they needed to. So I honestly don't believe in a standing army as did the founding fathers and these bases all all over the the world um thousands of bases i mean it's it's that's a whole nother show the military military industrial complex but as far as the most important ways to achieve freedom uh and looking at the most important things the military does come into play at some point in there. It's just, it, there's no way it can't because the only difference really, and this is how I think they want it because they want to federalize the police is that, well, the, the military is a lot better trained (laughs) <laughs> obviously probably smarter in in certain areas um not in general because when they take you know the average 18 year old off the street i mean so i i don't know that i would say that the military is smarter they are smarter in certain areas but there was that joke military intelligence is an oxymoron but the Military, um, again, can definitely get in the way of achieving a true freedom and liberty. So the difference, I think, with the military, though, then compared to the police, is I think a big percentage of the military is more supportive of true freedom, the freedom that I'm talking about, not the bullshit freedom that they talk about in the military themselves, that there's more people that would support or, uh, you know, throw down their guns and not uh, turn them against the people. So, the police seem to be more, I don't know if evil is the word, but definitely worse than the military. I could see a lot of the military, again, um, just saying if they were ordered to do certain things saying, fuck it, I'm not doing it. Most of the police, I don't see them doing that. Now, whether that's a matter of the type of people that are attracted to the job and a lot of people in the military just kind of being forced to join the military because they don't have a lot of options or for whatever reason, um, I see a difference in the type of people in general, that are in the military than that are in the police. I think you'd have a much better chance talking to the military and getting them to see a lot of these ideas than the police. So anyway, my summary of uh, why all police are criminals, and of course the fourth one is the one that's really undeniable and that does it, is... Uh, Of course, my personal experience with police, I've talked a little about it. Uh, I've been, you know, choked by uh, an officer at 16, um, arrested for things that I didn't do just because I put pissed the police officer off and I I, or he didn't like my demeanor um, was exactly what he said. And I don't I wasn't even that bad. I was just kind of like. Uh, all of a sudden a cop just comes up to you. It's like when you're minding your own business, are you supposed to be happy and Hey, Hey officer, you know, after having all these bad experiences, um, had bruises all over me. I mean, I've had too, too many experiences with police. Uh, that's just going into a couple. So all my personal experiences confirm that. And then of course there's other people's 
talking with uh, other people, their stories, and people that work with police and them telling me information as well. And then, of course, all the independent reporting now, videos, research uh, by groups like uh, Killed by Police, where now you can see how many people are getting killed by police or at least around how many. I would add to that number probably 10 to 20 percent that they are either missing or that are just not being reported, period. Because usually, no matter what, it will be reported by the local news if someone is killed by a cop. They can't ignore it. But, and it's never a top story, which is fucked up. Um, but it won't be a national story, but I'm sure there's, there's ones that never get reported and there's police that murder people and the bodies disappear. Don't tell me that it doesn't happen. And in Las Vegas, Hey, my house that I'm in right now, I rent, so it's not my house, but it, there could be bodies under the fucking house. Who knows from the old days in Vegas? Cause this house isn't that old. So I don't know where most, I wonder where, uh, most of the, the bodies got buried and how many they actually recovered, um, or how many they didn't recover <laughs> and where, where they uh, buried them. I, I would assume, though, that if they built something over it, especially because you can't dig that deep in into desert uh, dirt because you'll hit rock after a while. And I know when people were uh, burying people in the desert, they weren't uh, blasting through rock. So um, I wonder how many bodies have been found building houses or building businesses or any kind of buildings <laughs> since then. Um, so, and of course my last one is the one that says all, because the first three do not say all. It just says the majority. It, it makes you come to the conclusion that, the majority of cops are fucked up, that the majority of cops are criminals. But the last one is the fact that they kidnap people. And kidnapping is a crime. And when you kidnap somebody and lock them in a cage, a lot of times for not just for the night until they're bailed out, but for years because of that arrest. So because of that arrest you made, that resulted in that person being in there for that time. And a, and the judges are culpable. That, that's another thing that people tend to forget that the judges, the politicians, the whole system is just as guilty as the police are for what they do. But the reason I call it kidnapping, it would be in instances of nonviolent crimes, drugs, of course, being the biggest one that comes to mind. So arresting someone for possessing something is not a crime except in the eyes of the government who in my opinion, doesn't even have the authority to make that a crime. And up until 1914, they didn't never pass the law that told anyone what they could put in their body. And that was, 1914 was opium. When they had banned opium. Not banned it, but they uh, 
made it so you had to pay a tax and get a prescription and they put it in their control essentially so that was 1914 before that you could buy it off the shelves and the problems and i've done shows on this and wrote articles on this um you can find the articles again at nonpartisan liberty for all.com but the damage they they do by making something like opium illegal is so bad that that alone the government should feel disgusted in themselves but that's a that's another issue and and maybe after uh, i f- i finish this part i'll talk about that for a second but the kidnapping the reason why i call it kidnapping is because as a human you have the right to put whatever you want in your body and the government quote unquote believe that until 1914 now again i think the gov- governments when they start this is my philosophy on governments in uh the summary of my philosophy on governments which again i've talked about before the reason why i always say i've talked about this before is because i don't want people to think like i forgot that i've talked about it before because i don't forget that i've talked about what i've talked about so anyway um but hopefully there's new listeners along with listeners that listen every night as well and and i didn't talk about it exactly how i'm talking about it now it was in a different context or the same context but in a show that mentioned different things so it's not the i'm not redoing the same show but anyway as a human you have the right to do that and nobody has the right to tell you i mean people can tell you advise you or say you shouldn't be doing that but kidnap you and lock you in a cage for choosing what to put in your body the government does not have the authority the authority that the only authority the government has is that they have a bunch of weapons and a bunch of people that are willing to use them on you that's the only authority the government has otherwise they don't have shit but just because they make a law does not mean that they are not violating your rights. All a law is is a bunch of fuckhead politicians got together and said uh you know a criminal law or any law for that matter but you know we happen to be talking about criminal laws but I'll be specific to criminal laws is a bunch of fuckhead politicians got together and said this should be illegal and there should be a penalty for it and in the case of drugs the federal government as well as state governments did it i i don't know exactly uh that's one thing i do know a lot about the history of uh drugs but uh that's one thing i don't know i know that 1914 law was a federal law but how the states followed because the states were um, like now, if you get arrested for drugs, it's it's not a federal charge usually unless you're uh, selling, you know, huge quantities or something. But if it's just possession, it's not a federal charge. But um, it's just a bunch of fucking politicians getting together and, you know, having most likely somebody in their staff write a bill and then the rest of them voting on it and saying, yes, this should be illegal. That's all it is. Not only that, it violates the 10th Amendment because drugs should have been left up to the states and it violates, I believe, the 9th Amendment, which pretty much says if we didn't say in the Constitution that you have this right, it doesn't mean that you do, that you don't. So it means... You have a bunch of other rights that they didn't mention in the Constitution, a bunch of other freedoms. And to put what you want in your body is one of them. And I think that's why, prior to 1914, they didn't go after 
what you put in your body. Now, again, going back to my definition of uh, governments, I, I don't know if I uh, went through the whole thing, but I believe that governments essentially they just slowly take over and get to the point where they control everything and everyone. But they have to do it over generations and over a long time. Well, they don't have to. I mean, in other countries, they've done it a lot quicker. In the United States, it took them a long time. So things like this, it did take them uh, a long time. However, they might have just not thought of it beforehand or whatever. And it gave them so much power to invade your life. It, ge- it gives so much power to the police. That's the other thing with drugs, and I did a whole show on this, is that drugs being illegal gives so much power to the police because all they have to say is, I smelt marijuana, and then they can search your car. You know, or... Um, whatever things like that you know i smelt marijuana uh, coming outside of your the door at your house so uh, we have the right to search your house or something so they use it for so many things there's been people i've talked about all this there's been people killed over drug raids uh little kids because they went to the wrong house um, people that didn't know, uh, I'm talking about no-knock um, raids, people that have shot back because they didn't know it was police. It's just, the, read, um, and I say this every single time, read The Rise of the Warrior Cup by Radley Balco. It's definitely something that I think everybody should read. But all cops arrest people for drugs or possession of things that they're, there's laws that say they can't possess. You can't be a cop and get away with not arresting somebody for that. It's not possible. Unless you use discretion and didn't ever arrest anybody for those things, but you're not going to get away with doing that. Even if you're a detective now, a homicide detective, you did at one time do that. So you are a criminal. You kidnapped people. And not only did you kidnap them, but you lock them up in a cage like a fucking animal. And most of them, well, it it depends. But some of them, I'm sure went to prison and were locked up and treated like animals for months or years. And somebody that can do that, and they know going in that they're going to have to do that. So somebody that can do that, to me, is not a good person. Now... That doesn't mean that they don't treat their family well. They don't have friends that think they're really good people. It has nothing to do with any of that. But to compare apples to apples, the uh, analogy there, you have to compare police on the job to police on the job. Not, I know this person personally and they're a good guy to what they do on the job. It it doesn't work that way. So just because you know somebody personally doesn't mean that they're not out there violating people's rights when they go to work. 
And this is also why uh, there was a picture posted of them playing with kids with super soakers. I've seen pictures of them playing basketball with kids. And then the cops on Facebook asked, how come, you know, cop block or police accountability groups never put the good things that cops do? Well, number one, they're a police accountability group. They're not out there to do that. But the other reason is, is that has nothing to do with their job. It's not part of their job. It's something they're doing. Yeah, they have their uniforms on and they might even be on the clock, which would be worse. And, of course, it's all propaganda because if if they were really doing it because they wanted to and they might enjoy doing it, but you wouldn't see pictures of it. You wouldn't hear about it. But they, and I wonder if they're on the clock when they're doing it too, because that would be pretty fucked up and they probably are. But anyway, that's not comparing apples to apples. Now, if a cop lets somebody go for drugs that's doing something good in the terms of what I'm talking about because I'm talking about their job so within their job if they catch somebody with something that the government says they should not possess then they let them go, that's comparing apples to apples, and you can say they did something good. So you find me the cops that do that and the articles of that. I would I would mention that on my Facebook pages in a minute, but you're not going to find that because, one, I mean, they're not going to admit it anyway, and usually they don't do that. So... I know they, they'll post like, oh, because cops cops that defend the Second Amendment. And a lot of them, it's full of shit because all the sheriffs in Nevada signed that they support the Second Amendment. I even had cops that um, when I get arrested, you know, I had a gun, my gun in my car it was legal. But they're like, yeah, we support the Second Amendment. So it, it sounded like such bullshit. They're told to tell you that depending on where you live. I'm sure in Massachusetts, they're not told to tell you that. So briefly, um, I said before the, the, the break and I didn't get to it is, um, I mentioned before the break, the, uh, difference between Dale's group, the Detroit threat management center and security guards. And there is a huge difference which is hard to explain, but insecurity, I mean, and everybody's run into these people. And and this is something that uh, Dale wants to make sure that people understand this as well, that his team and his company is not like, you know, the security guards at the casinos in Las Vegas or the security guards at the mall. And they're not. And he can show that through, you know, video and training and all of this stuff as well. Uh, But initially, and I don't know if this is, because we didn't get into this, if this has happened before that people have, said that to him that looked at mentioned uh oh security guards like you know the mall security or whatever i i I don't know but these are and that's why he calls it the threat management center that they manage threats i had mentioned um now i forget what i had um mentioned but like personal it was personal something like personal, not personal security, but person, I don't remember. 
Um, but I thought it was good. But there's a huge difference. These guys are like uh, Secret Service or something. M- more uh, that type of security compared to the mall security who, you know, they pay $10, $12 an hour to these idiots. Um, you know, it's not like that. All his people are dedicated. They're trained. I mean, he's got rid of so many people because they didn't have the, or they had a certain mentality that did not fit in with what he's trying to do. So he got rid of them because they did not buy in to what he's trying to do. But these are, he- I mean, these are heavily trained people that would give their life to protect somebody else's. So the word security guard should not even come into it, period. Um, you know, it's hard when you talk about, I talk about getting rid of the police and that's the other part, um, the, and the government police, uh, is what I call it and replacing them with things like Dale's company and, not in the sense of the government pays for it, that people pay for it themselves, and that they help the people that can't afford it. And that's what they actually do now. They charge, I mean, they have contracts with all these different corporations and probably... uh you know, developments and things like that, housing developments and rich or people, or maybe with like an HOA or we know, I, I never asked specifically. I know that they have uh, contracts with people and they protect houses. Uh, I don't know if they're doing a lot of individual protection or more, through say an HOA and they protect a community but they are not security like you would think of they're not security guards so that's where you know, he, he had said that that's why he calls them, you know, threat management because they manage threats, which I, I think is a, a, a good name for the company. But to think of or talk about an individual that's a member, I don't know what you'd call them. And that's where maybe... Uh, Maybe he has a name. I, I didn't ask that, you know, a threat management specialist or something or or whatever, as opposed to, you know, security guard. But that's the type of security that I'm talking about, not the uh, security that there is now. Now, I know that he's really expensive, but what would happen is if there's no police – the price would go way down because the the uh, demand would go way up. So, you know, the corporations, you would still get a lot of money from those. But for just a regular person, the prices would probably go way down because you'd have so many, you know, everybody – would need some, not everybody because some people would choose, hey, uh, I'll take care of myself. But everybody, 
in general would need some sort of security. And that's where you have competition. You don't have a monopoly on security like you do now or a monopoly on force where you just have the police. Um, and, you know, as I said before, I don't have all the answers and how you deal with everything. But the, the most important thing is keeping people safe and making sure that they're protected. And that's where the threat management comes in. It's the threats to people and managing those threats and managing them in a way, and this is how they operate, where the threats that they manage don't get killed neither. They don't carry guns. They did up until 2015, but now they don't even carry guns. So now if it was a situation where there were no police and everything was security, maybe some things would have to change. I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, you need to be more prepared just in case of certain things. But I think for the most part, where you had all these competing security companies, I think long term it would be the best thing. And it's it's also what do you want as far as what is worse? So no matter what, there is no perfect system. With police, you're going to have all the issues that we have now and then some and most people don't even know about those they know a little from government media some people got killed but it goes way beyond that so it's which would you rather and in a system of private security it's not going to be perfect it's not going to be um, you know, there, there is no, uh, what do you call it? A utopia. There is no utopia. However, if you do other things along with that, like totally legalized drugs, well, there you eliminate a whole bunch of crime anyway, and the need for probably half of the police at least. And then you do things like, loosen gun laws in many of the states so people can protect themselves. Then everyone has an actual reason to have a gun. And then that bullshit, like no one has a reason. No one has a reason to actually uh, have an AR-15. And, uh, then you don't have, Uh, that kind of resolves that issue as well as people can buy whatever guns they want. And really they should be able to anyway, as I mentioned, the checks and balances and the separation of powers that really it's the people that should be the checks and balances and, and the final separation of power and the only way to do that is to be as armed as the police because obviously that one uh, didn't work out. The government just colludes with each other and the people are up against a major force with automatic weapons and tanks and all of this stuff. So people really should have all of that anyway. So when the main goal is that people have safety and protection 
and that sense of well-being, I think that's part of it too, of course. I mean, whether you're you're actually actually safe or not, and I think we're going to go till 9:30 uh tonight. Whether you're you're actually safe or not it is is kind of irrelevant in a way, even though that's what we want. But I'm saying for that for a person, it's that feeling of them feeling safe and protected. And of course, that's we don't just want them to feel safe and protected. We want that to be the reality as well. But if people were to say, if you were to ask people the purpose of the police, now, the per- their wanted purpose. So I don't want to confuse things because I, I was talking to Dale about this and I don't think he totally understood what I meant because of the way I explained it. Now, the police's job is not to serve and protect. That's a bunch of bullshit. They don't keep people safe. They don't protect people. Their job is to throw people in jail and generate revenue and fill the, you know, private prisons and all that shit. But what people want from police or what people want in society in general, I guarantee you the majority of people are going to tell you that they want safety and protection. They want their family, and I I talked about this on Thursday, they want their family to feel safe. Not to just feel safe, to, I mean, as I was saying earlier, I mean, they want that feeling but it to be a fact as well for their family to be safe, not just feel safe. So they want to be able to feel safe and protected. And that's what I think along with their property, of course, and they want their, you know, their property to feel, they want to feel secure in their property as well. And part of the reason I remember, um, Dale telling me a a story about somebody, you know, he's saying hi to someone and, and them not saying hi because they, they thought he was a cop. And he had to explain to them that he's not a cop. And the fact that they thought he was, once they knew he wasn't, changed their opinion of him. Meaning that that's the other thing. And that's why I always took security over police. Although the problem with other security is that you have the wannabe cops you have the security who, you know, has the attitude and acts tough. And, and sometimes they're worse than the actual police. They just don't have the power. So that's my problem with them. But assuming you had people like Dale's people, security that really their goal is just to protect people, people don't worry about the other stuff. So, like, their uh, D- the Detroit threat management is not going around looking for fucking drugs or looking to report people to the police that are doing drugs or getting involved in any, you know, they're doing their job of making sure that people are protected that there are no threats to their property there are no threats to their to them physically and that's what they're looking at because they aren't cops they don't arrest people 
They protect people. And that's the mentality. And this is why I think the people, um, you know, Dale has a lot of libertarian fans, I guess I'd call them. I, I don't know if fans is the right word, but it, it, they're sort of fans. People that uh, have seen because Cop Block went to the Detroit Threat Management Center and uh, Dale showed them around and um, they filmed all this video and posted it online. And, and that, that's how I, I, I heard about them. And that's how I developed you know, a lot of respect for them as well. And then I got in contact with them and then I, I talked to Dale. I had mentioned that when he was first uh, on the show, I had talked to him for a while as when I did my pre-interview and then I talked to him on the show and then I even talked to him after because he just has so much uh, to say and so many things that have happened uh, whether it's the buildup of the company, all the incidences. I mean, he has 20 years of stories and experiences with this Detroit Threat Management Center. So, I mean, that's why it'd be great to have him on the air as a, to have his own show, whether he's talking about stories of things that happen or whatever. You know, I had him on the air before on my show as an interview uh, to interview him. And then, you know, we'll have him on again in a couple weeks um, to talk to him about stuff. Not a, a so much as an interview, sort of a like half interview, more just, you know, ha- have more of a conversation because we already did the interview. So more of a conversation and uh, we'll talk about more stuff that we didn't talk about the first time he was on. And we'll kind of summarize what we did. And I'll go back and listen to the original uh, interview, which you can go to Spreaker.com and find it there. Um, you might be able to find it other places, but I know 100% that it's there because every show is there. So you can just look for uh, Dale Brown Threat Management Center. I'll actually find the episode number while i'm on air and uh, give that to everybody if you want to listen to it but um i don't want to spend the whole next half hour on that even though that is a big part of what i'm talking about regarding the police and regarding freedom because that's the alternative that we're looking at right now. Now, it might not be exactly, you know, I'm sure, um, I mean, Dale's had 20 years of experience, so I'm sure it's pretty well refined. But there may be, you know, things constantly change. So I'm sure during that time he constantly refined processes and ways to, like, for example, they got rid of guns, and that was recently. So there's things that may change or may not change. And then, of course, as much as I, I like Dale, you don't want that to be the only uh, security place in an area. Once you get to the point if we get to a point where there's no police, and hopefully we will, we wouldn't want that to be the only place in the area. We would want there to be other security uh, or threat management uh, firms that followed the same mentality, definitely, and because if they didn't, they go out of business, I believe. Um, and Dale kind of disagreed. I, I, I feel like if, if they were shooting people, that they go out of business. Now, he thought the, the opposite, but I, I think most people would appreciate what he's doing. Now, when you experience all the stuff that he did, and I don't even know you know, half the stories. I I know some of them from talking to him, but um, 
there's I'm sure there's plenty of them that I'm sure that affects your view on people and maybe he doesn't have the you know same not that I'm I'm not optimistic at all actually I think there's a lot of fucked up people but when it comes to actual criminals I think that's a small percentage criminals that commit crimes against other people I'm not talking about people that do drugs and stuff like that and one of the things we had talked about that is one of the hardest things to deal with I think and police deal with it all the time is domestic violence and that whole thing so that of course is always an issue but we would want and when I say we, I'm not saying him because, of course, he would want to, you know, uh, make as much money as possible and serve as many people as possible. And I definitely want to see a Las Vegas threat management center. But I mean, in terms of competition, just so there's other, you know, it forces him to be better. It forces him to be the best that he can be. And, of course, he's not going to be around forever. Um, So you want and hopefully them to take that same philosophy, that positive philosophy of protection and caring about people's lives and not be these crazy mercenaries or anything like that. But then, you know, you have competition. You can't just do whatever you want and, you know, those type of things. So, but the reason why I talk about it so much is because it's a major part of ending the police. Because I don't believe that you just get rid of the police and then there's nothing. And what's funny is a lot of people think that when you say we need to get rid of the police, that you're saying we need to have nothing. And of course, I've never said that, but they assume Oh, if we didn't have police, then we'd be screwed in this and that because they they think you'd have nothing. Um, but that is not the case. So when it when it comes to getting rid of the police altogether and going to and again, I don't have all the answers. But when I look at, as I said, no matter what, you're not going to have a utopia. I think there's always going to be issues and nothing's going to be perfect. But I gladly take a setup where you have arbitration, you have competing security companies, and that's how you deal with things. And I actually have, if I can find it, a clip that goes through and explains that their idea uh, kind of sums it up. And it's a, it's a good kind of starting point. Um on how you can have free market security. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it because that's where it goes through having competing security uh, companies and then how that would work. And that's just their idea. Again, when you get people together and come up with different ideas and those type of things, obviously 
a lot of people feed up. Like, I'm somebody who comes up with my own ideas, but also feeds off of other ideas as well. So there may be uh, an idea that people feed off of and, you know, add to and and have the freedom to do that and get rid of pat. I mean, that's a big thing, too, is getting rid of patents and copyrights and all of that that i wouldn't put as one of the most important paths to freedom as i i've talked about to this point because uh today's show i is of course about the police but i i also mentioned in the notes that i was going to talk about a little about uh Thursday show as well because it, it kind of fits in and I didn't really finish up everything I, I was talking about. So let me actually get into some of that. Um, so, After, well, I, I would say before get, getting rid of the police, I think there's a number of things that would have to be done. And the problem is, of course, is I don't believe any of this is going to be done through the system. It has to be done through noncompliance and the people. And we have to take things into our own hands. We really do. And... Now, what that exactly means, I don't know. But, I mean, if you get a bunch of people together, as I said, and get them to not comply, they can't arrest everybody. They just really can't do anything. Those laws kind of go away. And the same, and the other, the other thing that I had mentioned is the concept of making the government irrelevant as much as you can, which in a lot of circumstances is is hard because we can make the police irrelevant as possible, meaning we don't call police and we can start a whole thing where w- Nobody calls police and we get a certain amount of people that actually go along with it in a specific city and 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 try it, you know, in a city like a city like Detroit, for example, uh, where they have a, you know, the threat management center. But to start that and then go from there and start taking all of these parts of the government and not using them. And again, it's hard. Like with police, you can't totally get police out of your life. They're going to come up and question you or harass you or any of those things. So it's hard to just, you can't, do the same same thing you would do with a business that you didn't want to deal with anymore. So I'm talking about more of a boycott of the government, but you can only boycott so much. I mean, if you think of your your daily life, I mean, really, how much of it do you need the government for? Or your life in general. I mean, besides roads, which there's, uh, that's the thing. Well, how would we have roads? And I remember fucking hearing that recently. There are other ways to get roads built besides fucking government. So, and I'm not, that's just a whole nother long conversation that I'm not going to go into. But, so let's say that. We 
Um, besides, sorry, besides Rhodes, what else do you on a normal day use the government for? Now, some people, it's their whole life. I mean, they're on welfare or, um, you know, something else, public assistance, whatever, and they need the government for everything. And that gives the government more control over them as well. But if I think about my life, again, besides roads, there's nothing from the government that I need or use. Nothing. And out of those things, because you could say trash, but trash doesn't have to be that way. Trash could be privatized. And when I say, just again to clarify, as I did on Friday or Thursday, that there's a difference between the government contracting like they're doing with the prisons where they're paying the prisons and something being private. Private means that you pay for it. So if trash was private, that would mean that everybody paid for their trash. Just like if we went to a private security or a threat management uh, scenario, it would be private, no government money. It would be people paying for it. And when you take things like taxes and because I'm for more moving towards, you know, no government. So if you take taxes and all of these things out, people are more apt to help other people. So. And when they know the government is not helping them, you'd see a lot more charity. You'd see a lot more people getting help. Um, You'd see a lot more of that as well. So either people would be taken care of, whether these companies provided services for free or other people uh, paid for it or neighborhoods came up with you know, a plan where they all chipped in for their neighborhood or whatever, it would get taken care of. Now, again, uh, people, you know, when I start going into the stuff, ask me the what ifs. You have the what ifs and I, <laughs> fucking what if is one of the worst phrases I've ever heard because that's what government uses to justify about 90% of what they do. What if this happens? What if that happens? What if, what if, what if, what if? So it's, well, what if this happened? And, and again, I don't have all the answers. I, I wouldn't be building a society by myself or transitioning society by myself, obviously. It would be a lot of people. It would be everybody, really, because the whole point is for people to have the freedom to live their lives how they want to. To be able to do what you want without being spied on, without being harassed by police, without having government in every aspect of your life. People keep forgetting that, too. I I, I remember, not I remember, I mean, I was at the movies, what, Sunday, to see my movie, Jason Bourne. So in the movie, uh, or before the movie, they had a preview for Snowden which comes out uh, September 16th, actually a couple of days before my birthday. And 
I think about how it even goes beyond what he's he's come out with. There's no doubt. I mean, but people don't even really talk about that shit anymore. I don't even think it was a question really in any of the debates. And if anything, it was we need to get more uh, vigilant. We need to spy on people more. I mean, and they didn't use those words, but that's essentially what they were saying. And it's crazy. I mean, Donald Trump, I, I don't know who's worse when it comes to freedom, Hillary or Trump. They're probably just as bad that they're both totally anti-freedom. Neither one of them said anything that had to do with more freedom or more liberty. It was just the opposite. They want more laws. They want more spying. They want more going after um, people. And that's where things are going. It's a lot worse than I could even put into words. And, of course, most people, the average person is like, whatever, things are, that's bullshit, that's just conspiracy Everything is uh, not great, but okay. You know, the economy is a little fucked up, but whatever. But I'm not, none of the things I say for the most part, and if I do, I'll say more that this is what I think or this is something, you know, my uh, idea or my uh perception or what what I think of it. But most of this stuff is out there. We all know that the government spies on everybody, that they suck up all your data. Um, We all know that, and nobody seems to give a fuck. If you go out and look at government documents, you can find all this other shit out. I mean, it's there. It's unclassified documents are out there. I mean, the connection to al-Qaeda, to ISIS... I mean, this is a country who murdered a president. So what they did, in my opinion, is they started a government in order to get everybody on board. There's certain things they had to do. But the end game... When you start a government, it's like a board game almost, and you have to start, and you start government. In the end, winning the game is taking over everything and controlling everything. It's 1984, the movie, for people who don't know, um, who are young, (laughs) I guess. But that's what it is. And it's getting closer and closer to that point. It's like they started at the beginning and they, you know, right away start taking away freedoms and more and more. And then once they hit, you know, the 20th century, it started to speed up and speed up. And in the past, you know, after 9-11, it really started speeding up. Um even in after the Oklahoma Oklahoma City and after the crackdown on you know the start of the drug war um there's certain or after Kennedy was killed you can look at all these points in history and a lot of people like to think that this just started when Bush became president or when Obama became president that's when freedoms became under attack now, freedoms became under attack when the government started in the first place. The government was overthrown from the Articles of Confederation. But even starting, even that, 
I mean, I think that gave more freedom, but it, it's still the Constitution or any government never – there's no government that I know of that is truly free because you can't be truly free if you have rulers, first of all. But even if you wrote the greatest document, if I wrote a one-paragraph thing that said do whatever you want as long as you don't hurt anybody and got a little detailed in, in um, as far as you know property crimes and crimes against people and that's about it. And then if you do those, this is what is going to happen and um, created a small system for that. I guarantee you that whoever is administrating that, the politicians, the people in power... Are going to add to that, and in twenty years, a hundred years, the reality of it is going to be totally different, just like with the Constitution, and that's what happened. When you give people power over you, they take advantage of it and they try to take as much power as possible. I can't. I don't remember how many times I've said that on this show. And partially it's because it's like drilling it into people's heads because it's the truth. Politics is power. Politicians are not just about the money. Millionaires and billionaires are not just about the money. How much money can you fucking spend until it's like, I don't need any more money? It's not, a, it gets to a point where it's not about money anymore it's about power and control and being able to do whatever you want and looking at people like they're ants and you own them which the government believes that they own everybody so of course, legalization of drugs would be a huge thing. I, I'm i not optimistic that that's going to happen because it takes a lot of power away from the police along with so many agencies. Now, if they do legalize it, they're going to do it in a way that gives them some sort of power like they've done with cannabis. They're going to tax the fuck out of it. They're going to regulate the fuck out of it. And that's the scary part, I think, to me, is even if they get to a point where all drugs are legal, which I can't see that happening. No politician has ever even said that. No politician except maybe one or two have said even to legalize uh, cannabis. So it's hard to even get a, a politician to, to say that cannabis should be legal. Never mind, you know, heroin. So how far away are we from that? I, I don't know, but we're not as close as some people may think. And then you have, which I've mentioned, the people that say, the people that want to still control, but they base it off the drugs. So they say, well, we don't think marijuana is that bad, so we're fine with it being legal. But heroin is, so we want to keep it illegal. Even Portugal with their quote-unquote legalization, it's not exactly legal. It's more decriminalized for certain amounts. But they still go after drug dealers. They don't sell it in stores, as far as I know. 
And that kind of defeats the purpose of a lot of it. So um, I've talked, of course, a lot about the legalization of, of drugs and wrote about it as well. And I'm still not done with that series. I think I'm on part either five or six of why um, the, the drug war and why drugs should go back to the way they were in, before the 1920s, which is basically you put them on the shelf at the fucking pharmacy or grocery store or whatever, and people buy them. Because what they're doing to people, uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, I started to get into it like, you know, with heroin, they they'll blame. Oh, heroin is you know, uh, such a bad thing and whatnot. And and really, what they're doing is they're driving people towards heroin by not giving uh, prescriptions for painkillers. It, it's things like that that the government does. That's just ridiculous. Or they're forcing people to pay more money and go to the street uh, for things. And it's just it's it's crazy and they can't not know what they're doing i think they know exactly what they're doing so well we went a half hour over and uh i think that's all the time we have for tonight and i still didn't get to uh some of the things i wanted to get to it's uh, doing a two-hour show now, and this one was two and a half. It, it's still it's still not enough. I don't know. I always just have a lot to say, I guess. But we'll be back tomorrow, so be sure to tune in. Of course, the same time, 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern. We'll be joined by Ken Shorjan to talk about the economy and geopolitics so and be sure to check us out at nonpartisan liberty for uh find the or just type in the detroit threat management center on facebook and like them uh they have a facebook page now and we will see you tomorrow thanks everybody have a good night you need to comply with the police officer the way the system was meant to be. Comply with the orders of police officers. Resisting arrest is a real and dangerous crime.